I'm Dean Karstens and this is Dean's N-Scale Trains. Today I'm going to give you my second video on electronics and model railroading and I'm going to show you how to connect wires. These days many model railroaders are intimidated by wiring but as you can see recently with new methods of connecting wires and connectors things have gotten a little easier and it's not quite so intimidating. Those of you who follow my video channel know that I've been working on my 36 by 80 inch Conejos Valley Railroad for some time. I've been away from that for a while working on these electrical videos, but currently I'm starting to build the roads for that layout and I'll be back with that shortly with another video. Stay tuned. In this table, I show the five kinds of connections and connectors that I'm going to talk about today and also show you when and how to use them. First, there's the splice connection, which is the simplest and cheapest, followed by the crimped automotive type connector. Next is a wire nut connector used, uh, used a lot by electricians in wiring houses. Then there's the suitcase connector, which has been used for quite some time in the model railroading community. Finally, I recently found the shrimp solder connector on Amazon, which is fairly new. All of these are very cheap, as you can see from the second column. In the third column, I show you that in all cases except the suitcase connector, you have to strip the wires before you connect them together. Finally, in the last column, I show you that one of these, the shrink solder connection, has to be completed with heat, which can be dangerous when you're using it around things like styrofoam. So today I'm going to start with a splice connection, which is a very simple and cheap way to put wires together. You do have to strip the wires, and if you want the best results, you should solder them. In either case, you need to insulate the connection, either with shrink wrap tubing or with just simple electrician's tape. For large model railroads, people often run large bus wires around and then have feeder wires going from there to the tracks. The easiest way to do this is just to have a mechanical joint. Which is not very tight but you might be able to get away with it. Then just use black electrical tape to insulate it. Mechanically, it's in good shape, but it's possible you might have Intermittent, intermittent electrical joints. Let's just do a quick test. I'm going to measure the continuity with my voltmeter. lowest ohm resistance measurement, resistance range, and it is electrically okay. It is, however, better to um, solder this. This is the one time, by the way, that I'm going to use a soldering iron. Let's see if we can't get that solder melted against that large copper wire, which is basically a great big heat sink. So 
mechanically and electrically, that's a very good joint. Now, another way of insulating those is to use heat sink tubing. And I'm just going to use a flame to shrink that. And we end up with something that's electrically tight and physically tight. The automotive crimp connection is quite cheap and it's uh, been around for a long time, but you need a special tool and it's prone to disconnect, particularly for the larger solid wires. And there are these squeezable connections that are primar primarily used in the auto industry for fixing your auto, your car. They don't require solder or heating. They come in various sizes. And they have various connectors, screw terminal connectors that you can, spade connectors that you can attach to screw terminals. Either open or closed. So, these are fairly easy to use. I've stripped my wires a little bit. There are barriers, so you can't push them all the way in. And then all you have to do is squeeze them with this tool. And you see it has a yellow, blue, red for whatever you're using. So there you have it. I don't particularly like these because it's difficult to squeeze them for me, but they do work. Here are several sizes of wire nuts. Again, these only cost a few cents. They're easy to use and come in a variety of wire sizes and different colors. And if you want to, you can join several wires together with them. One of the early ways to attaching two or three or four wires is a ubiquitous wire nut. These are used by electricians regularly. They come in various sizes and they're very easy to use. Here I'm going to join two 12 gauge wires. I find a wire nut that fits fairly nicely. To gauge how much to uh, strip these, you want to go from about there to there. So this might be a little bit short, but it should work. All you do is press the wires together and twist these until you can't twist them anymore. It's a very tight connection, holds forever, and you can undo it quite easily. One of the nice things about wire nuts is you can join multiple wires. So I'm taking two number 12 stranded wires and a number, I think they're 14, two number 14 stranded wires and a number 12. I'm going to bring them together. Twist until they're tight. It's a nice solid joint. Here's another example. Often in model railroading, you have to join multiple wires together. Here I've got four, number 24 wires. I'm gonna use a blue wire nut. There you have it. If you twist the wires as together as you go, which you can with these smaller gauges, it makes for a tighter connection. 
Here I show three examples of the suitcase connector. This is quite easy to use, doesn't need any special tools, and again it's quite cheap. One disadvantage, however, is you can't connect wires that are different in size. For example, it's hard to connect an 18 gauge wire to a number 12. This table shows what, ga what wire gauges they're usable for. The red is 18 to 22 gauge, the blue is 14 to 18, and the yellow is 12, 10 to 12. To use these, it's pretty simple. I'm going to use, this is number 18 gauge wire, so I'm going to use the red connector. Pass one wire through there. The other one, there's a little stop there. If you push hard, you can have it go all the way through. But once you have this positioned, all you have to do is take a pair of pliers, squeeze down this metal slip, Till it's tight, turn the over, turn the lid over and snap it, and you're done. I recently found these Tycon connectors or shrimp shrink solder. I found these on Amazon and they're relatively easy to use and quite cheap again, but you have to use heat to shrink them, and I found that it's well worth to buy the uh, heat gun. I recently found these, they're called Tycon connectors, T-I-C-O-N-N, -N. they're available on Amazon, come in various sizes, and they're very, very nice because they're heat shrinkable, they have solder in the middle that melts and seals and um, makes a good electrical joint. Then these outer bands melt and seal the thing to keep water out. These shrink solder joints are relatively easy to do. I've pushed three wires in such that the copper is underneath the solder. It's well worth buying this um, heat gun to make it easier to put these together. Just heat it until the solder melts. And there you have it. You see how these two end pieces shrink down to seal it. So actually you end up with a watertight tight seal. So here's a photo summary of the various type of connections that I showed you how to do today. I hope this video has been useful for you. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Dean's N-Scale Trains, if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.